feel you had to get the punch back, or was it just you saw an opening? Um, I knew that he would uh, close the distance. You know, uh, Clay's got a very particular style. He, he uses two different, but uh, everybody knows him for that pressure, that movement, you know, um, just outpacing guys. Um, and then he's got that little bit where he kind of sits back, and, and uh, like he was doing today, and, and throws some of those bigger shots. And, um, I knew that once he landed that and, and wobbled me, that he would come in. So I tried to meet him with the shot as he came in, um, and was able to connect. And um, he does leave his neck open a little bit when he when he shoots. Um, so once I hit him, uh, it was right there and, and wrapped it up. And thoughts on Herb's stoppage? Uh, <laughs> did you feel it was it any tap? It didn't, certainly didn't look at Kamara. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't quite tell. I knew that he was hurt from the punch. Um, and I felt his hand move a little bit, but it didn't. It didn't really feel like a tap to me. So, you know, I, I knew the choke was on. And if the if the guillotine team wasn't there, my left leg was over top of the shoulder, so I was going to get the triangle. Um, so I was just kind of anticipating his head popping out. And if it did, then I was going to transition. But uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a, a good step. We, we spoke on Wednesday, and you were telling me how you didn't enjoy the uh, the wars, although you get into them all the time. Um, safe to say, it's a perfect night for you. Um, almost, you know, except for that except big for right the rock. hand, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's always one, there's, a, there's always one, um, you know, I, I was prepared for a 15 minute battle, you know, um, uh, coming into this in great shape, um, and, you know, I've been in plenty of them, but, uh, you know, I, I fight to do that, I, I train to do that, I sacrifice time away from my family so that I can do that, so that I can get a call in six weeks and fight again. Um, you know, because those long, drawn-out, 15-minute wars, they take a little bit of uh, time to recover from, and uh, you know, they, they take some fights off your career, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, to, to go in there and, and uh, do what I know I can do, uh, it's great. Clay Guida, Hall of Famer, tough guy to submit. You were able to, you know, get the submission. Where would you rank this finish in this moment in your career? Um, this is this is pretty high. You know, um, it's. Uh, you know the the one over Kamos is still it's still pretty high and I think this one's right there and it, it might overtake it being that it's you know in Jersey I've had a pretty crummy streak in Jersey um, you know and, and, and nothing to do with the fans or anything like that just you know opponents and, and stupid things happen to me as well and and uh, that's just the way that it goes but uh, it was good to kind of get back on track and and uh, get another first round finish as well. And you know, you mentioned how you're just taking fight by fight, and, and you know, kind of, you don't have like long-term goals. But does a performance like this kind of change your mind and, 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 and say, hey, maybe I do have you know a long time left in, in this sport? Um, I, I think I do. You know, and, and when I say fight by fight, I don't, I don't mean that uh, you know I'm like right there. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to prepare myself as a, uh, you know, a provider for my family for that next step, um, and that's kind of the, one of the biggest things. But. Uh, you know, if I can feel healthy and, and perform like that, um, you know, my last three wins have come in the first round, uh, you know, in, in just over two minutes. Um, so I know what I can do, you know, yeah. it's just a matter of doing enough fight night. What's next for you? Any any event you have in mind that you'd like to return at or any opponent you'd like to face? Um, no opponent in particular, you know, <laughs> I, I've never been the type to, to pick opponents and I know that that's like, oh, well, you know, you need to guide your career and all that stuff. And, and, and you guys in, in media, you do like to give fighters crap for not picking, uh, picking opponents. But, uh, you know, that's not, that's not my thing. Uh, I'd, I'd like to be working my way back up to the top of this division. And, and um, you know, I, I'd like to fight guys. Like, I was really excited to fight Clay. I mean, this is, this is a guy that's, that I've got a ton of respect for. Um, and... Uh, it was it was fun preparing for it. It was fun having him in my mind and you know envisioning his face on the pads as I'm hitting him. Um, but uh, yeah, you know it, we'll see. And, and, and if if Sean needs me to fill in soon, I'll fill in soon. Yeah. The only thing is that you, you can't get me during elk season. <laughs> and, and last thing for me, um, this is your first win at home, right? No, no, no. Uh, but it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. It's so been a bit. you broke the New Jersey curse. Uh, yeah, there was. A little, I'm not I'm not superstitious, but there was a little bit of a curse. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, does that feel a little bit extra special, you know? Uh, like, yeah, it, it, it's good. It's good to get the win, you know, here in, in front of my fans. And, uh, 
Jim, it's uh, Donald Cerrone, Damian Maya, George St. Pierre, Michael Bisping, and now you, the only fighters in UFC history with 20 wins. What does that mean to you? That's a hell of a group to be compared to, you know. Um, I, I'm not the type to obsess about some of these little records and stuff like that that I've got, but uh, that's a that's a really cool one, you know, the weight of it. Uh, just hearing their names uh, is pretty pretty awesome um, to be associated with that group of guys. Jim, Mickey Gall had talked about training with you and looking up to you. Were you able to watch his fight tonight? And if you did, what did you think of his performance? Um, it was, I, I missed the first round because we were just coming coming down and stuff like that, but I was able to get it, you know, on my phone. And um, You know, he went and he fought a tough fight against a tough opponent and uh, was able to keep attacking throughout the fight and won a tough decision. Um, you know, he, he did great. I mean, that kid's... He got he got thrown to the wolves, you know. Like your second fight, you're walking out into that is is pretty ridiculous to think about, um, you know. But at the same time, that's a kid that, as a teenager, was coming to sparring days with us, and I mean, mixing it up. When, and that was when we had a group of you know six or seven guys fighting in the UFC, and um, he's right in the mix, and, and uh, you know, and training with everybody. So. He's, he's got the experience when it comes to the training aspect. It's, it's those little things. It's hearing the roar of the crowd that you still, I mean, I was in the back end goosebumps and you know, like just you're, you, it's, it's hard not to let your uh, emotions and, and your adrenaline just take over sometimes. And, and uh, it's kind of a learned skill to, to keep it down um, and to kind of push those back. So um, yeah, for him to just, for him to be here and competing is, is awesome. How good, of a, how good of a feeling is it to put together your, what, 3-1 and one now in your last four, I think? After that four-fight slump, how good of a feeling is that to kind of prove doubters wrong? And... It, it's great. It's, you know, I mean, um, I, I've never really concerned myself with the doubters, you know. It's, it's, but it's, for me, it's going out and, and, and proving to myself, really, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great feeling to go out and, and perform the way that I know I can. I know you said you're not one to call out names, but you seem to have a lot of fun with Guida, who's another legend. Is that something that would interest you, another guy of, of that stature moving forward? Uh, it, would, it would definitely uh, interest me, you know, like uh, hearing the names that, I've, that, that I recognize, that I uh, have seen fight and been fans of, um, it, it's awesome, you know, it's awesome to... to you know, be with them in the build-up and, and, and uh, you know, step into the octagon with them. Um, you know, I, what I need to do is I need to start going up to 70s and 85 so I can find some more of those guys that, that, I, that I've always wanted to fight, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter to me who is across the cage when they close the door behind me. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun to, it's fun to have uh, that potential for that really exciting fight like you know that it's it's a lot higher uh, probability with a guy like Clay. Did you guys say anything to each other after the fight? Yeah dude yeah, I mean Clay's awesome he's he's awesome he actually gave me his, uh, one of his shirts you know he's starting up that uh, that fishing thing with uh, Chad Mendez and, and and gave me one of the first round of his shirt so um, yeah you know he's a he's a like I said he's a guy that I got a ton of respect for um, he's been in it he's fought a who's who um, I mean how can you not like the guy? You know, they're calling you the Benjamin Button of uh, <laughs> MMA. How do you, uh, how are you turning about the clock? You look uh, 29 up there. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the line is he's turning like a, you know, like a <laughs> symbiote or something like that, right? Like a venom. Like a uh, yeah, you know, it's definitely coming with its, its bad sides of it. But um, you grow your hair out a little bit and everybody freaks out, <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, was, it was a struggle for a couple of years there. You know, it really was. And, uh, it wasn't easy, and without the support of my my wife and my family and my team, uh, I, I wouldn't have gotten through it. And, and um, you know, even after my diagnosis and, and coming back in 2016, having a great uh, you know tail end of the year, half you know second half of that year, um, I still came back and got my ass kicked by the line. <laughs> you know, at the end of the year and, and uh, into 2017, and dealt with some some bogus stuff that. Uh, Know, nobody wants to deal with and you know it, it was just uh, it was tough you know and I think then, that that's going to be a lifelong story